Uh, hi everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining me on this Lord's Day. Uh, today we're, we're looking at a passage of scripture that is beautiful and powerful. It was spoken to the nation of Israel, but is totally applicable to you and I in our everyday life. I hope you are really blessed by it, but listen to the word of the Lord from Isaiah 61. This is from also Jesus' first sermon preached from this text. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to the humble, and to the afflicted. He has sent me to comfort and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed, he has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. To all who mourn, he will give a crown of beauty, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. What a beautiful word, because all of us uh, are in a place where we need that kind of grace of God to touch our lives. But I want to bring our attention to the very first thing that is said in this passage. The very first phrase, if you, were, if you will remember, it is, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And so I just want to take a moment and um, and talk about the Spirit of the Lord and and His work in our life. Um, you know what? We, uh, as a people of God and as a church, if we do not have the Spirit of the Lord present in our lives and in our church, um, we're not living the kind of life that God intended. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord brings us many God moments along the way. I'm sure you can think of a moment where you just were stunned because you saw that God broke through. When the Spirit of the Lord is at work in our life, that happens regularly. That is a part of our journey, part of our life. Divine encounters. Even since coming to Spruce Pine, I have had a divine encounter where I know the Spirit of the Lord was very present and is at work. Uh, so I want you to pray for the Spirit of the Lord to be poured out upon your church and your life. When the Spirit of the Lord uh, is fully uh, upon us, it gives strength to our life. It gives a life to our church. It empowers people to walk in their God-given gifts. It heals hearts and minds. The Spirit of the Lord counsels people, speaks to hearts. We can be a, a kind of Christian where we actually experience the Lord speaking to our heart regularly. We can discern and sense uh, God at work and we can learn to follow. Uh, so the Spirit of the Lord is um, what opens this passage, and I ask you um, to pray for your church and for your life that God's Spirit would come in a new and fresh and a powerful way to do whatever God wants to do. Some people may not be comfortable with um, asking that kind of prayer because they don't know what God might be up to. They feel like they may not be ready for it. But the scripture uh, does say this in Luke 11. As a matter of fact, these are Jesus's words. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, will not your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And so I'm asking you to ask God for the blessing of the Holy Spirit to come. And I'm excited to know and to see what will happen when we are praying in that kind of way. 
The scripture goes on and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to the humble, and the afflicted. And we must remember that that's what's on the heart of God. Of all the things we have packed into our life because of the culture that we live in and the world that is um, bombarding us with information and entertainment and all of that, we must Remember that the heart of the Lord is towards the poor, the humble, the afflicted. And I want you to know, if you do not already, that Spruce Pine does an amazing work reaching out to people that are in broken states, that are in very needful states. Just in the last 10 years, Spruce Pine has touched the lives of over 1,500 people in our community, 1,500 families that have dire needs and have and has given over, over $300,000 to support community needs. And I have to tell you, I have not seen that in any of the churches that I have pastored thus far, and that has been four other Methodist churches. That's an amazing work that you are doing. Uh, so I say to you, uh, members of Spruce Pine and all who are listening, reach out when you see those needs and let the Lord use you as a vessel to touch lives. That's what Jesus intended. That's life as Jesus intended. And Isaiah 61 goes on and says, he has sent me to comfort and heal the brokenhearted. You know, of all of the things that uh, could have been on God's mind, um, the Lord is touched when folks' hearts are broken, when things have happened that have devastated their lives. And that is, uh, that is why um, that's the mission of the Lord Jesus. Now, not, this not only applied to Israel, who is uh, in and out of captivity, but that that applies to all of our lives. We have moments when our heart is just crushed, when life did not go as planned, and our hearts are broken. And God has power to restore, and he has power to restore your life and mine. No one needs a seminary degree to reach out to the brokenhearted and to bring comfort to people. You don't need a certification or take a church class to do that. A child can do that, and we as adults need to be uh, reaching out to folks that have broken hearts. I, I can remember many years ago uh, when my family was experiencing a very broken-hearted moment. We had just lost someone very, very close to us. We were in the hospital where they were taken, and the doctors had just come out to tell us we had lost our loved one and we were crushed uh, to say the least and on that evening we watched the nurses come down from the third or fourth floor from the hospital the nurses that had given care to our loved one for weeks trying to keep them alive they came down one at a time just to be with us and what i remember is that very few words were spoken, if any. They came down with tears in their eyes and they wrapped their arms around us and just shared our pain. The tears flowing. One at a time, the nurses came down. And I remember that to this day uh, because that was a divine moment, a holy moment when God was pouring into us comfort from nurses that made a mark on our soul and helped us as they shared in our grief. We can be there for people. We don't have to know what to say. We have to be bold enough and loving enough just to be present. And I want to encourage you to live into that. And we don't have to be afraid of tears. Tears are holy to God. In Psalm 56, we have a very unusual word, and it says that God takes our tears and puts them into his bottle. Every one of them are recorded 
in his book. What a powerful scripture. Some people don't like to have tears. It's too vulnerable. But I'm reminding you that that is a vulnerable and holy moment. And God sees it and records those moments in his book. So reach out and comfort anyone. Who is it in your life that is brokenhearted, that needs comfort, that you can reach out to just with your presence? And the scripture goes on and says, The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. And to Israel and history, this was an incredible message because they they were in a period of captivity and uh, the armies, one of them in particular, the Assyrian um, uh, people that took Israel captive, they were ruthless uh, to their prisoners. And to hear a message that God was saying, you will not always be captive, I will deliver you, is a powerful truth. And every one of us needs to remember that. There's a verse in Isaiah that gives a picture of captivity, and I'm going to show it to you. And the verse reads this, Because of your arrogance, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your mouth and lead you where you came from. And um, we think that the if you're reading Isaiah and are keeping up with the uh, reading through the Bible in a year, you might have come across that passage. It sounds like very symbolic language, but it is something that really happened. I'll show you a figure, a picture, if you will. Israelites in captivity. The king actually put a bridle, a hook into their lower lip. This is how they led their prisoners. And historically, we see statues and um, pictures of this in ancient artwork. And the king would take that bridle, connecting the lower lip of the prisoners, and with his left hand, pull them towards him. And in his right hand would be a spear, and the spear would be to gouge the eyes. It is a horrendous picture, and it is a picture to say, you do not want to be in captivity to this evil ruler. And we are reminded that we don't want to be in captivity to the things of this world and to the evils that are in this world in our own journey. It is more devastating than we might ever think it could be. And so it's a reminder, but the word of hope is that the Lord is the Lord who delivers people from captivity. He not only is willing to do that, but he has almighty power to do that. And we must believe that. So what do you need to be freed from? What tends to hold you captive? What does God want you to be delivered from? That's a question worth asking. The scripture goes on to say, The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. There's a period where God said, This is no longer a season of mourning. My favor now is resting upon you. And for our own lives, there comes a time where we must shift gears and lean into the favor of God to realize that the, part, the time of um, difficulty and mourning is a season. And the Lord desires that season. It has an end to it. And the Lord says the time of the Lord's favor has come. Trust that. I remember sitting with a, a counselor, a uh, pastoral counselor, and we were sharing um, life together. And I must have mentioned three or four times some woes in my life as if I was feeling sorry for myself and repeating those things over and over. And he stopped me and he said, that tape is no longer helpful for you. 
you need to get rid of it. And I never forgot that. I had been rehearsing my woes for a long time, over and over and over again. And sometimes we do that by default. We don't even realize it's happening. Uh, but it was a reminder that I don't have to live like that mentally. That every day the Lord's mercies are new. That's a, a, a biblical promise. And the scripture goes on to say, and I ask you before I go on, do you have any mental tapes that need to be ditched? And if so, may the Lord show that to you and may you let go of that and move on with the Lord. The scripture says, and I will give you beauty for ashes, a garment of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. And so the Lord is the Lord of good news in this passage. Um, we can, and I pray that we will all put on a garment of praise instead of the same old attitudes maybe that uh, come up again and again. We can choose to walk in the delight of the Lord and to remember the good things God is doing and put on a garment of praise and not be ashamed of that. So share the thanks to God and the praise to God as often as you can. It will change not only your spirit and your mind, but it'll bless other people. So this is the good news of today. The spirit of the Lord coming to deliver, lift up, heal, and comfort. May that grace of God be in your life and in the life of Spruce Pine. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a moment of prayer. Lord, I ask that the amazing divine promises in this word would enter into the lives of all who hear this morning. Lift up and heal and comfort and renew and deliver to the glory of your name. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.